Europeans, Indians, Persians, and even a famous Austrian painter, each one claiming the title of Aryan. But do these so-called Aryans even know what this term actually means? Throughout history, the term Aryan has been hijacked by politics, mythologized by extremists, and misunderstood by millions. So now the question is, who were the Aryans, and which modern group of people is the closest connection to them? In today's video, we're going to find the answers by diving into the genetic data to unravel the truth. Welcome to DNA Uncovered. Before we begin, let's clear one misunderstanding. Aryan isn't a catch-all term for all Indo-Europeans. Instead, it's specifically tied to the Indo-Iranian branch of this vast language family. Though many Indo-Europeans cultures in Europe had their own synonyms for the term, there was no fully developed Aryan identity in Europe. Europeans and Indo-Iranians indeed share distant linguistic roots through the Proto-Indo-European language, but their genetic and cultural paths split long before the Aryans came on the scene. The Proto-Indo-Iranians, the direct ancestors of the Aryans, originated from a back migration to the Central Asian steppes. Meanwhile, the other branches of Indo-European languages, except for Afanasyevo and Tocharians, remained in Europe. Fast forward to the Eurasian steppes of modern-day Kazakhstan, where the Sintasha and Andronovo cultures emerged around 2000 BCE. These cultures were a direct offshoot of the corded ware culture of Central Europe. They had the typical Late Bronze Age steppe profile, mainly Yamnaya-like, but with a mixture of European farmer ancestry through the globular amphora culture. As seen by reconstructions from ancestral whispers, they looked like this. Today, modern Scandinavians are among the populations most genetically similar to these ancient steppe cultures. But it doesn't mean that the Scandinavians directly descend from them. Instead, their genetic makeup is similar due to shared ancestry through the corded ware horizon. In easier words, think of it like this. You're related to your uncle, but you don't directly descend from him. These nomadic pastoralists would eventually become ancestral to many groups across Asia. But the story of the Androvo people isn't just about language or warfare. These people carried distinct genetic markers, like the Y chromosome haplogroup R1A, which still appears prominently in modern South Asians and Central Asians. However, they were not the only contributors to the rise of the Aryans. To the south, there was the Bactria Margiana archaeological complex culture, also known as BMAC a highly advanced culture in what is now Turkmenistan and Afghanistan. The BMAC people built sprawling cities, engineered sophisticated irrigation systems, and traded lapis lazuli all the way to Mesopotamia. But they didn't speak an Indo-European language, nor did they carry steppe DNA. Instead, their genetic profile was rooted in Neolithic Iran, which had a mix of minor Anatolian, ancient North Eurasian, and ancestral South Indian influences. Now here's where things take a fascinating turn. Somewhere around 1500 BCE, Andronovo groups started moving south into BMAC territories. But this wasn't a swift invasion at all, but a slow mingling or what you may call a cultural and genetic fusion. This fusion later resulted in the Yaz culture, 1500 and 500 BCE, a society that combined Andronovo language and rituals with BMAC artistry and urbanism genetically balancing both influences. Think of steppe warriors adopting the spiritual practices of settled farmers like fire altars, purity rituals, and myths of cosmic struggles between light and darkness. This unique blend gave birth to what we now know as the Aryan identity, a term derived from the Sanskrit Arya and Avestan Arya, meaning noble or honorable. The Yaz culture laid the groundwork for the philosophies and traditions that would later be immortalized in the Vedas and Avesta, Today, the Yaz culture is considered a key cultural context in which the Avesta text was likely compiled. This raises the question, were the Andronovo the original Aryans? Well, not exactly. There's no denying that they provided the linguistic and paternal genetic backbone and roughly half of overall ancestry. However, their identity as Aryans only crystallized after mixing with BMAC. Think of it like building a house. The Andronovo provided the solid foundation, language, chariots, and patrilineal clans, while the BMAC added the intricate architecture, urban governance, complex mythology, and artistic details. In the end, the Yaz culture was the finished structure, a blend of both worlds. 
Fast forward to today, who really carries the most Aryan ancestry associated with the Yaz culture? Genetic studies point to the East Aaronic peoples, including Tajiks, Pamiris, and Yagnobis, living in the mountainous regions of Tajikistan and Afghanistan. These groups still retain the highest Yaz-related ancestry, between 50% and 90%. Their languages like Waki, Yagnobi, and Shugni belong to the Eastern Iranian branch, directly descended from the ancient Avestan language. But here's what will surprise you. Turkic groups in Central Asia and the Volga Ural region also carry a substantial amount of Andronovo ancestry. While their BMAC admixture is lower, they still possess anywhere from 30% to 70% combined Andronovo and BMAC genetic markers. Yet they aren't considered Aryan, neither linguistically nor culturally, proof that genes and identity don't always align. Further down the ancestry ladder we find West Iranians, the modern-day Persians in Iran, and North Indians. Persians are often estimated to retain around 40% of Yaz culture ancestry. However, it is difficult to determine the exact percentage as they also seem to have some genetic input from earlier Yamnaya and Catacomb cultures. Their language, Persian, Farsi, evolved from Old Persian, a Western Iranian language distinct from the Avestan tongue of the East. On the other hand, North Indians, especially groups like the Roars and Haryana Jats, can carry up to 50% of Andronovo and Yaz-related ancestry. This gradient is a reflection of the ancient mixing between migrating Indo-Aryans and the local Indus Valley populations, a process memorialized in the Rig Veda's depiction of the clashes between Arya and Dasa. Now you must be wondering, what about Europeans? Well, despite speaking Indo-European languages, their genetic ties to the Yamnaya, the earlier Proto-Indo-European steppe culture, show that they diverged from the Indo-Iranian branch long before the Aryans emerged. The Yamnaya migrated west into Europe around 3000 BCE, while the Sintashta and Andronovo headed east much later. So, while Europeans are linguistic cousins to the Aryans, they're not their direct descendants. Now, let's address the elephant in the room, the early 20th century political party that adopted the Aryan identity. While Germans, like many other Europeans, are related to Aryans through shared corded ware culture ancestry, they didn't directly descend from them. In fact, some groups of Europeans, like the Slavs, who were considered inferior by that party, actually carry more Andronovo-related ancestry than Germans. But here's the thing. No modern group is a pure heir. East Iranians, Persians, and North Indians all carry a blend of steppe, BMAC, and indigenous ancestry. Identity isn't static. It's a palimpsest, constantly rewritten by millennia of migration and mixing. The real Aryans weren't a fixed race. They were a dynamic cultural force, one that shaped empires, religions, and philosophies across Asia. So, who exactly were the Aryans? Turns out the answer isn't as simple as we've been led to believe. The Aryana identity was shaped over thousands of years by complex migrations, genetic mixing, and cultural exchanges. It wasn't one race or a specific group, and today no group of people carries a pure Aryan legacy. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive, Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. As always, the references to all the studies used for compiling this video are mentioned in the description box. Until next time.